Ladies and gentlemen, today we are going to be talking about ethical ETFs. These are the new investments at the moment. These are all the rage right now, and I'm sure you've heard about them. If you haven't, allow me to explain. These ETFs are basically made for people that want to invest ethically and want to invest according to their values. So stuff like climate change, gender equality, sustainability, all that good stuff. So it basically means that these funds will invest in companies that are very climate focused. They're looking out for their, their carbon footprint and obviously the management is equal as well in terms of male and female. So if you look at it from the outside, it seems like a fairly good way to invest, right? You can put your money um, you know, where your values are and invest in companies that are sustainable. These ETFs have like super strict guidelines on what they will invest in and what they won't invest in. So if the companies don't meet these guidelines, then the companies will be kicked off and new companies will be added on that are trying to meet these very strict guidelines in terms of equality and climate change and all that sort of stuff. And the whole idea of these types of investments is the fact that money will flow into companies that are being ethical. And when money flows in from retail investors, these funds will invest in those companies and theoretically the share price of those companies should go up because money is obviously flowing in and the companies that are not doing so well so we've got you know coal companies and oil companies money should flow out of those companies and the stock price should hopefully decline so as you may know a ceo of a company especially a listed company on the stock exchange has every single incentive to raise the share price as high as they can. Because oftentimes a CEO's overall compensation is tied mostly to the share price. CEOs get given stock options that only become valuable if the share price goes high enough. So in that sense, the CEO has every single incentive to raise the share price as much as possible. So as an example, they may be earning a salary of 200 grand a year, but their stock options might be worth like $1.5 million. So as a rational person, if you're working super hard as a CEO, you have obviously you want to try to make as much money as possible and you want to you know, put the right incentives in and raise the share price so you can make not just 200 grand, but also make a crap ton of money, which is the 1.5 million. And that is how a board of a company aligns the CEO's personal objectives with the objectives of the shareholders by basically you know, aligning the incentives. You make good money regardless of whether you do a good job, but you make insane amounts of money if you can do an outstanding job and if the share price goes up. So basically in the whole context of ethical ETFs, CEOs have an objective now to be as you know, climate focused as possible, to be as much sustainable as possible so they can attract these ethical investments and, and these ethical funds so you know, these funds can add them to their portfolio, money goes into the companies and the share price goes up. The CEO is happy, you as the investor will be happy and hopefully the world is becoming a better place. Everybody benefits from that. Now this sounds all well and good. As I said, it's very well meaning, right? People want to invest according to their values and as a result, if the world can become a better place by becoming more sustainable, it's a good thing for the planet. But what happens when ethical ETFs get it wrong? And I'm putting wrong in you know, these quotations because it may not be wrong to you, but I think it's wrong. Let me give you an example of ASX SE from BetaShares, which is probably one of the best performing ethical ETFs in Australia. Last year, this fund manager dropped Tesla from SE. And the reason why Tesla was dropped was because of controversy and water usage in their new proposed factory in Germany, breaching COVID restrictions and supply chain issues as well. Now, I would argue that Tesla is doing the absolute most when it comes to climate change, and we can find plenty of sources to support that argument. But the weird thing is, this fund still kept on Toyota, which is the largest manufacturer or probably the largest manufacturer of combustion engine cars. So tell me, how does that make sense, right? You drop electric cars, which are going to be the future, but you still keep on Toyota, which is obviously, you know, producing gas cars still. Let me give you another example from just this year. Tesla was again dropped from a different index, the S&P 500 ESG index. And the reason being was because of their lack of low carbon strategy, their business conduct and poor working conditions inside their factory. Now, look, those things are pretty bad, especially the latter. But the same index that dropped Tesla still kept on literal oil giants like Exxon. Yes, Exxon. Just pause for a minute and think about how ridiculous that actually sounds, right? This index, which claims to be, you know, ESG and very climate focused and social focused and stuff like that, kept on oil companies, but dropped Tesla. And the result of this is the fact that oil companies will now get millions and millions of dollars of inflows into their stock because of all these funds buying up this company because now they've been recently added and lots of money is now going to outflow from companies like Tesla. And this is precisely the problem. The way that ESG is worked out is very flawed in my opinion. 
and I get that it's trying to focus on the climate and stuff like that, but you can't tell me this makes sense. If someone disagrees with me on this, please let me know why because I would love to know why this is still such a good idea. Now look, I fully understand that ESG takes into account not just environmental factors, but also social and governance factors as well. But also at the same time, the people that are buying into ETFs like this obviously don't want to invest their money in oil companies either. So clearly there's a problem here. Not to mention 90% of active fund managers that pick stocks don't even outperform the market themselves anyway, so there's that as well. If these fund managers are actively picking companies and working out which is ethical and what isn't ethical, you know, statistically speaking, they will underperform the market anyways. Why would I want to settle for less than market returns and compromise my own financial independence by a number of years just to be ethical, right? I don't even think that this is ethical in the first place anyways, because as we saw, oil companies are still in the index, right? While actual companies that are trying to make an impact are being kicked off. Now, just a quick disclaimer, not every single ethical ETF out there is actively managed. Just wanted to point that out. But look, I can go on and on and on about issues and different technicalities with these ethical ETFs that don't really make sense, but I won't. I do, however, recommend you guys check out this post on Reddit by a guy called Happy Pineapples um, on Oz Finance. He makes a pretty good point. Um, don't mind the title though, I think he's pretty pretty annoyed at ethical ETFs, but he makes some pretty good points. I don't agree with every single thing that he said in this article, but if you are looking to invest ethically, I would highly, highly recommend do check out this post because it does have some very interesting points. I'll leave a link in the description for you guys. Now at the moment, newer and younger investors that are entering the market are very climate focused, so they might look at ethical ETFs because that aligns with their values. And I would say that out of everything that ethical ETFs focus on, climate change would be their biggest concern. So they might go on Google, look up ethical ETFs in Australia, and of course they will come across ETHI. So let's take a look. The title is obviously BetaShares Global Sustainability Leaders ETF. They might scroll down to the returns and see that they are actually pretty good. You can see since inception, the returns has been like 17.8% per year, which is pretty insane. So you know, clearly they're doing something right. So they might look at this and see, okay, returns are good. It's investing in sustainable companies, so it must be environmentally friendly. Let's buy it. However, they may not be necessarily aware that this ETF is still investing in companies like Toyota and Tesla is nowhere to be found, for example. Now, of course, all people should do their research before investing in anything, but let's be honest here, how many new people entering the market actually do their research and research every little thing about the ETF? literally nobody. This is why I think ethical ETFs can be super misleading and as you can probably tell in this video, I'm not a fan of them. I think ESG is greatly flawed in terms of how it's worked out and I wish more people would talk about this because all I hear when it comes to ethical ETFs is how good they are and the positives but not the negatives. There seems to be virtually zero criticism when it comes to ethical ETFs and I think for us, for all of us to become better investors, we should be able to you know, talk about these things and have a very open mind. I'm not a fan of handing over my hard-earned money to some fund manager who can decide for me what is ethical and what isn't ethical, that is not gonna happen. I'd like to decide that on my own. Anyways guys, rant over. If you still want to invest in these types of ETFs, you can check out this video right here, which are the best ethical ETFs in Australia. Even though I don't invest in them personally, I think we should still learn about them. And guys, thank you for being here. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye now. And that's how the board of a company decides 